Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. guided tour through the regions of the mysterious and the macabre. Every man has his price, or so we are told. Some of us may protest that we are not for sale, and we may even be convinced of it. However, one should really refrain from making such statements until one has turned down an offer. The cynical view is that human beings are like the stock market. It's merely a matter of closing the distance between the bid and the ask. Is there really such a thing as an offer one cannot refuse? That's what the next hour is all about. What can I do for you, ma'am? I want someone to commit a murder. What did you say? I believe you heard me. Madam, this is a furniture factory. I am the owner. I know exactly who you are and what you do. Why come to me? I'm not a murderer. I'm willing to pay a million dollars. Murder is against every moral and religious conviction. I'm willing to pay a million dollars. I would never... I'm willing to pay you one million dollars. mystery drama, Million Dollar Murder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by Listerine Lozenges and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Luck, as you know, is fortune. Of course, that's good luck. On the other hand, we have bad luck. The way it works, most people average out, which brings us to the law of averages, which says that over the course of your lifetime, you can expect luck to break 50-50. Well, some people can get each 50% all at once. Here we have Richard F. Nelson. Till recently, he's had nothing but good luck. But these past several months, he's taken one blow after another. He's 35. Half his allotted three score and ten. Is bad luck to be the pattern for the rest of his life? Come in. Jerry, come on in. Sit down. Dick, uh, I, uh... What's the matter? What's the long face? Well, I guess there's no other way to say it except to say it. I'm leaving. You what? I got another offer. You're walking out on me in the middle of the season? Dick, I can't turn it down. The money's twice as good. I taught you everything you know. I made you my production foreman. My future to think about. What are you giving me? Two weeks. Two... As far as I'm concerned, you can walk out of here right now. Pick up your money and beat it. Okay, Dick, if that's the way you feel. Jerry, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I, I had no right to talk to you like that. Actually, I, I should be happy that you're getting a break. Dick, believe me, if it wasn't for the oh, money... come on, you're not supposed to spend your life out here in the sticks. You don't really owe me anything. Where's the job? Imperial Furniture. Imperial? Oh, that's big time. I don't even know how they ever heard of me. Well, word gets around. You're a top man, Jerry. Well, I, I, I sort of felt you'd be glad for me, Dick, because that's the kind of guy you are. It's just that so many things have been going wrong lately. I, I guess I'm just a little off stride, that's all. Well, you know, my assistant's a pretty good man. Well, don't worry about it. We'll survive. 
Anyhow, good luck. Thanks, Dave. And let's have dinner one night before you go. Hmm? Well, I'm going to be working overtime to the last minute. I want to leave you in good shape. Oh, by the way, that northern cherry wood I wanted to use for the sofa frames, it didn't come in. What do you mean, didn't come in? We should have had delivery a week ago. Look, you get back to the shop. I'll handle it. Sure. Yes? Millie, get me George Cawley, please. Yes, Mr. Nelson. And I have a call from Edward Jerome of Western States Merchandisers. Will you talk to him? Will I talk to him? What do you think? Yes, sir. I have Mr. Nelson for you now, Mr. Jerome. Hello, Dick. Eddie, what's new? Dick, I'm, uh, I'm calling to tell you that we have to cancel. What? I just got word this morning. Cancel? It's direct from the eighth floor. Eddie, we made a lot of those chairs to your particular specifications. Well, that was just part of, you know, an informal understanding. But why, Eddie? I don't know. I guess all of a sudden, classic is out and modern is in. Eddie, practically all of it is made, packed, ready to ship. Believe me, Dick, I understand. Do you know what I've got tied up in that order? Yeah, yeah, I know, and I'm sorry. Look, well, can't, can't you salvage even a piece of it for me? I tried. Dick, you know I tried. But they shot me down. I'm, I'm really sorry, Dick. I'll be talking to you. Yeah, yeah, okay. I could almost believe it's a plot. What now? Yes? I have Mr. George Cawley. Oh, thanks. Go ahead, Mr. Cawley. Hi, Dick. What's on your mind? Where in blazes is my cherry wood? Oh, uh... Well? Well, Dick, I'm sorry. What happened is there's no record of your ordering any. No? What do you mean? It's a standing order. Well, actually, it's kind of an understood order. I don't care what it is. I've been getting that shipment every month for over a year. Look, here's what happened. You know, my oldest got his master's in business administration, and he's come in with me, and he set up procedures. George, all I want is the and cherry wood. And nothing can get shipped unless there's a written order. And the shipping clerk must have forgotten to tell it. Dick, I, I'm really embarrassed. Well, look, forget it. How quickly can you load a truck and get it out here? Well, that's the problem, Dick. I don't think I've got ten feet left in the warehouse. George, I have to fill a special order for a New York chain. I'm sorry. It was a terrible misunderstanding, but I'll make sure you're taken care of next month. Next month? I have to wait 30 days? Well, I hope it's only 30 days. You know how scarce that stuff is getting. All right. All right. Thanks, Dave. For what? Well, for being so understanding. The average guy would have flipped his lid. Sure. Sure. Goodbye, George. Millie, for the rest of the day, I don't want to hear any bad news. You understand? Please, Mr. Nelson, it isn't my fault. I'm going to the club for lunch. What could happen to me there? Hello, Dick. Oh, Judge Morrow. Uh, you expecting anyone? No, no. You joined me for lunch? Thanks. I, I was hoping I'd run into you. You look a bit out of sorts, Dick. Something wrong. Yeah. What is it? I wish I knew. <laughs> You'll have to explain that. Oh. Judge, you familiar with the story of Job? Mm -hmm. More or less. Well, that's who I feel like right now. I don't see any boils. <laughs> well, it might have been somewhat presumptuous of me to make the comparison, but I just feel that I am about to go down the drain. Are you serious, Dick? Judge, if things go on at this rate, I'll be bankrupt within a year. I stand to lose everything I own in the world. But everyone says things are going great at your plant. Every day it's something else. Another setback. I'm losing key customers. How? I don't know. Vital raw materials don't arrive. Why? It just happens. And to top it all, my foreman got a better job and is leaving me. What is it? What's happening? Well, we just a lot of bad luck. But so much bad luck? All at once? Dick, I've known you all your life. You've always been the golden boy. Fortune has smiled upon you constantly. Well, she's an extremely fickle old girl, and now she wants to frown for a bit. But it just seems to be a pattern. <laughs> You've probably been spoiled. You've never had to cope with adversity. No, no, so... it's more than that, Judge. It's reached a point now where I know that every day is going to produce another setback. Oh, come on now, Dick. It's all in your head. Yeah, wait, where's the waiter? Uh, Charlie! Charlie! Would you please bring a phone over to my table? Why do you want a phone? I've only been away from the office for 20 minutes, Judge. And I am willing to bet trouble is still rolling in. 
Thank you, Charlie. You, uh, might want to see a psychiatrist, huh? Yeah, I would if I could sell him some furniture. Richard F. Nelson and Company? It's me, Millie. Oh, it's a good thing you called, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Davis of Consolidated Phone. They're sending back our order. Mr. Nelson, how did you know? Millie, I'm taking the rest of the day off. You see, it never rains. It pours. Yes. But eventually, it stops. One time it didn't stop for 40 days and 40 nights. And for most people, that was forever. You don't have to let Jerry Lyons go, according to the union contract. I know, I know. I can keep him for a full year on a technicality, but what's the good of it? He'd be unhappy. And why did you let George Cawley off the hook? Dorothy, what was there I could do? You know what probably happened. Somebody needed that wood badly, offered him a higher price. Oh, come on, George Cawley isn't that kind of a guy. You're not that kind of a guy. And so you want to believe the best about everyone else. And Eddie Jerome? Maybe the time has come to reach a certain understanding with Eddie. What are you talking about? Maybe Eddie wants to be taken care of. Dorothy, you know I've never done business that way. Maybe it's time you thought about it. What are you saying? I don't know, Dick. I I just... I never heard you talk like that, about things like... like bribery and... I know, I know. But maybe that's the way business has to be conducted these days. Maybe you and I have lived a kind of a charmed life so far... Maybe we were shielded from reality. Look, I have always prided myself on being ethical and honest. Maybe I'm being punished for... For what? Hubris. Pride. Who knows? Hello. Who are you? How did you get in? May I introduce myself? My name is Althea Beaumont. Uh, Your door was open, and so I... What is it you want? What do I want? First, may I sit down? Oh, thank you. How are things at Richard F. Nelson and Company, manufacturers of fine furniture? Well, miss, uh, it's... Mrs. Although Mr. Beaumont has left us these past five years. We uh, don't want to seem inhospitable, but... Uh... Of course. So, let us get to business. Business? Yes. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Are you a furniture buyer, Mrs. Beaumont? By the end of the year, the Richard F. Nelson Company will need one million dollars. What are you talking about? Salaries, accounts payable, loans due, and nothing is coming in. What do you know about that? It's true, isn't it? Well, we have had a phenomenal streak of bad luck. I know. And that's why I'm here. To reverse that streak. Who are you? No, reverse isn't quite the way to put it. Although that will happen. No, what I should have said is that... I'm here to help you ride out that run of bad luck. In short, Mr. Nelson, I should like to offer you one million dollars. As a loan? Oh, no, 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 no. As a gift. Why would you want to make us a gift of one million dollars? But, Dick... This woman is crazy. Uh, darling, that's, that's no way to... Of course it is. It's a sound, practical, feminine reaction. And you should verify me first. Here is my card. And here are some banks you should call. And of uh, this brokerage firm. I've authorized them to answer your questions. And I shall expect you to have lunch with me at my suite tomorrow at uh, 1. But why should you want to give my husband $1 million? My dear Mrs. Nelson... Should one look a gift horse in the mouth? There are two schools of thought on that subject. People like St. Jerome and Miguel Cervantes said no. On the other hand, had the men of ancient Troy been more scrupulous in the inspection of their gift horse, the Greeks would have lost the Trojan War. But who is this Mrs. Althea Beaumont who intends to offer a million dollars to a complete stranger and for no apparent reason? We'll know more when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Does luck, good or bad, 
follow a pattern? According to the law of averages, you're supposed to get an equal part of each over the course of your lifetime. And we even have testimony for this in the Bible. After all, the seven fat years were followed by seven lean, all of which is scant consolation to Richard F. Nelson, who has been having some problems lately. Come in. Ah, oh, welcome. Oh, uh, won't you both sit down, please? Now, Mr. Nelson, Mrs. Nelson, have you investigated me? Well, we, uh, we made some calls. And we discovered that you, uh, you're a fabulously wealthy woman, Mrs. Beaumont. Fabulously wealthy. <laughs> yes, you could put it that way. And so, you have ascertained that I am capable of giving you a million dollars if I choose. Yes, but we can't understand why should you choose... Well, I expect you to perform a small service for me in return, of course. Are we supposed to sell our souls to the devil? Dorothy. What a remarkable notion. Oh, please. I didn't mean it to sound that way, but what am I supposed to think? Out of a clear blue sky, a, a stranger offers us a million dollars. And, well, these things only happen in books or plays where you have to make a bargain with the devil, don't they? You need that million, don't you, Mr. Nelson? Yes. You said something about uh, performing a small service. Oh, yes. And I don't think it's too much to ask, considering that I'm willing to pay a million dollars for it. What do you want us to do? Do you know Judge Walter K. Morrow? Know him. He's my dearest, closest friend. The judge has been like a father to Dick all these years. What about the judge? I want you to kill him. Oh. What did you say? I believe you heard me. Dick, I, 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 I'm frightened. She... She, she, she's a mad woman. I would disagree. You can't be serious. Kill Judge Marl? For one million dollars. You are a sick woman. It isn't worth one million dollars to you? I shall have to report this to the police. What will you report to the police? Who would believe such a ridiculous sounding accusation? Then you admit it's ridiculous. No. I only said it sounds ridiculous. I don't believe we have anything further to discuss. I agree. We have discussed enough for one day. Sleep on Mrs. Beaumont, you are an evil, vicious woman. You may feel differently tomorrow. About murder? Never. You know where to find me. I'm sorry, Dick. We can't afford you anymore. I counted on that order. The merchandise is just too expensive. But it's highest quality. It's the best workmanship, the raw materials. I know, the... I know. But we can't sell it. Maybe the public doesn't appreciate it. Look, isn't there any way that we can do some business this year? Well, you'd have to give us a better price. How much better? Say, 30% better. 30%? How can I do 30% better? Cut corners. Cut corners? Take out the quality? Our customers don't understand quality. Therefore, we don't demand it. And so you don't have to put it in. I wouldn't know how to do business that way. I understand your problem. But you have to understand my problem. Yes. Yes, look, let, let me think about it. Maybe, maybe I can figure something out. I sure hope so. Goodbye. It won't work. What? You can't compete with the cutthroats. How did you get in here? You didn't come to see me. I have nothing to see you about. So I decided to make it easier for you. I came to your office. Tell me, why do you want Judge Morrow murdered? I don't like him. And for that reason... I can afford to indulge my emotions. But why offer me a million dollars to do it? Surely you could hire some, some gangster to do it for a lot less money. It has to do with what you were just talking about on the phone. Quality. Quality? Yes. Because this murder would be meaningless if it didn't have a certain quality. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your motive is. Ah, Richard. Richard. Don't I look familiar? No, I can't say that I ever... S look closely, Richard. You don't recognize me? I don't seem to. How many people have ever called you Richard? And 
And how many girls have you ever known who were called Althea? You've blocked it and her completely from your mind, haven't you? Althea? To Althea from Prison by Richard Lovelace. Stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Minds, innocent and quiet, take that for a hermitage. Good Lord. If I have freedom in my love and in my soul, am free. Angels alone that soar above enjoy such liberty. It's Althea. What a coincidence. Your name was Richard and my name was Althea. And we pretended that you were that poet, that wonderful 17th century poet. How old were we? Althea. Just 18. You can't be Althea. You were the wealthy college boy and I only a townie who worked at the coffee shop. Oh, how I loved you, Richard. You were so different from every boy I'd ever known. Please, Althea. You introduced me to art, music, poetry, and now, now you don't even remember. I do, I do, I remember. Do I you remember. remember the day that I told no, you Althea, that don't. I loved you so much, Richard? I Althea, loved you please. so much. Althea. Let me refresh your memory. No, Althea, please. We were walking in the woods, and we came to our favorite spot. Althea, darling. Tell me you love me, Richard. Oh, tell me. I love you. Richard. What's the matter, darling? What is it? Well, I... Something wrong? I, I guess it all depends on, on the way you look at it. You're acting so mysterious. I suppose I am. It is the eternal mystery, the age-old mystery, the ever-new mystery of life and birth. Althea, what are you saying? I'm saying that we, you and I, are going to... Althea. Are you sorry, Richard? Sorry? Oh, my darling. Darling, I'm so happy. Are you sure? Yes. Well, we'll have to get married. Oh, Richard. You're the only girl I've ever loved, Althea. We're going to be married sooner or later. Okay. Sooner is greater. It was on a Sunday. I remember it. It was my day off. And you said that you were going home to break the news to your legal guardian, Judge Morrow. And the following week you came back, and the distinguished jurist. He was with you. <laughs> Must have been quite a week, because... At 18, marriage is out of the question for Richard. But, but we're going to have a baby. Richard, aren't you going to say anything? Why, dear girl, you gambled and lost. What does that mean? Don't force me to be blunt. Richard, what we did was because we... We were in love. Tell him that, Richard. Richard cannot and must not marry you. It will destroy his career and the plans I've made for him. Richard... Aren't you going to say anything? Richard and I have discussed this matter from every viewpoint, and we have reached the same conclusion. Richard, please, Richard, I, I won't let you leave me. I won't give you up. I'll kill myself. Althea, no. Be quiet, Richard. We have here a determined and consummate little actress. Judge, I... Richard, we discussed this thoroughly. We arrived at a conclusion. But I've changed my mind. Then I shall change mine. Please, Judge. I keep reminding you constantly that you are to receive the bulk of your father's fortune at my discretion. But I love her. Of course you love her. And I'm sure she loves you. But your children, both of you, still children. And you've been playing an adult's game. But I can't give her up. I realize that I sound like a villain, but somebody has to take the mature approach. Now... Althea, we'll take care of all your expenses. I don't want your money. There's no reason why Dick shouldn't pay for his mistake. His mistake? Richard, tell me, was it a mistake? Was it? Tell me. Althea. I see. I want you both to leave this place this minute. Althea. Get out. Now, Althea, we're just trying to do the right I thing. I said we... get out. And one day, I promise you, I'll pay you back. 
I will pay both of you back. And here I am, Richard, ready to keep my promise. Althea, what happened to the child? Do you really care? Yes. The day doesn't go by that I don't think about it. I don't know what happened to the baby. In those days, they made you give them up. It isn't the way it is today. Back then, it was a shame, a sin, a stigma for an unmarried girl. Who knows what happened to him? Althea, it's over. And I've suffered as much as you have. Oh, no, you haven't. Believe me, you haven't. You don't look as if you're suffering. Oh, I'm the elegant lady now. But I had ten bad years before I met Jack Beaumont. He was attracted to me because I reminded him of a half-drowned kitten, Jack Beaumont. Have you ever heard of him? No, I... Uh... Happy Jack, the wild catter. One day the drill would strike oil, he'd be worth millions. The next day he'd be flat broke. Fortunately for me, he died on a day he was rich. Althea, I have repented every waking and every sleeping moment. Have you? Look, what I did to you was wrong. I've spent my life trying to make up for it. Have you? I've tried to be honest, to be ethical. Ask about me, ask anyone in town. I'm the most trustworthy... You're a phony. When I was a child, I was impressed. But the truth is, Richard, you are a hollow man. You have no real convictions. In the end, you'll always sell yourself to the highest bidder. Excuse me. Hello? Mr. Nelson, I have Mr. Southworth on the phone. Oh, from the bank. Uh, tell him I stepped out of the office. But he says it's very important. I'm out of the office and I can't talk to him. You have some notes overdue at the bank. How do you know? I own the bank. What? I'm the majority stockholder. And next week, Southworth will have to call in these notes, or else. You own the bank? Yes. Yes, I also recently acquired Imperial Furniture. And my new manager was instructed to hire your foreman, Jerry Rizzo. Oh, so that's how... I also have a controlling interest in Western States merchandises. <laughs> I don't think they'll be buying from you in the future, or... At least until I give them the word. Did you also buy up George Cawley's mill? George Cawley? No. No, I don't know about that. Well, it goes to show you bad luck is contagious. You won't need me to destroy you. From now on, it can uh, be a snowball rolling downhill. But we can always break up that snowball before it gets out of control. Just uh, kill Judge Morrow for me. No. I'll never do it. Never, as we all know, is a long, long time. Actually, it's the same as forever. And things have a way of falling into different perspectives. And circumstances can alter cases. Man is nothing if not flexible. Well, will he or won't he? The third act is coming up in just a few moments. We talk about morality. But what is morality? It comes from the Latin mores, which means customs. In other words, what the majority believes is moral. Now, if we are having this searching analysis of morality, it's only because Mr. Richard F. Nelson is undergoing the same process. Mr. Nelson is in danger of losing everything he cherishes unless he commits murder. And murder, as we all know, is not moral. So, what is morality? Dick? Yes? I, I was at the club today, and I signed for lunch. Oh? And as I was leaving, John, the manager, took me aside and, and said you hadn't paid our dues and that we were three months... Yes, I know, I know. Dick, I don't want to be embarrassed, so... So won't you take care of it? Wait a minute. 
Dorothy, is it possible that you don't know what's happening? Dear, surely we can pay our dues. We're going to have to resign from the club. Well, that's impossible. Do you realize my family has always... Well, my grandfather was one of the founders. We simply no longer can afford it. What am I going to say to people? I don't know, and I don't care. Well, that's no way to talk to me. Look, you're going to have to sign this paper for me. Why? I'm taking a second mortgage on the house, and I need your signature. But this is really my house. Dorothy, I have a note coming due at the bank. Daddy gave it to us for a wedding present, but he really meant for me to have my it. My darling, we are facing bankruptcy. Uh, I don't understand. This Althea Beaumont woman is out to destroy us. So Why? What have you ever done to her? Nothing. Nothing. Now, look... I can make it, despite everything, with the mortgage on the house and we can pawn some of your jewelry. But... We have no choice, darling. Just a minute. Hello, Dick. Uh, mind if I come in? Well, Judge, uh, of course, of course. Well, how about joining us for dinner? Judge, how good to see you. Oh, I'm on my way up to the country to spend a little time by myself. In the cabin. Are you all right? Well, you know how it is. You get to be my age, and any day can be your last. Oh, Judge, you mustn't talk like that. No, anyhow, I thought I'd drop in and let you know the bridge game for tomorrow night has to be canceled. Oh, that's all right. What's all this Southworth tells me? Southworth? Yes, at the bank. You seem to be running into some cash flow problems. Oh, well, uh, we've had a few reverses, Judge, uh, Matter of fact, I was thinking of asking you for a loan. Me? Where else can I turn? My boy, 15 years ago, I gave you all the money you were ever going to get from me. Now, Judge, times happen to be very tough. It's tough times that bring out the best in people. That's when you develop character. But I have some unusual problems. I could do the easy thing, Dick, and give you the money. But you get out of this yourself. Now, you've got the stuff, and you'll see... You'll both thank me for it later. Seems I remember I once heard you say that before. Mm -hmm. You may have. And I was right, wasn't I? Well, goodbye. I'll probably be back for the weekend. What is he talking about? Oh, nothing, nothing. All right, now I can raise uh, 80000 on the house. The jewels would be another fifty. And we have the Persian rugs and the porcelain and the silver. Dick! I'll be able to pay the interest and meet the payroll. All I need is some breathing room, Dorothy, and I'll beat this thing. Just stand by me, darling. Stand by me. Promise. Uh, I promise. Ah, Mrs. Nelson. Mrs. Richard F. Nelson. May I come in, Mrs. Beaumont? Oh, forgive me. Of course. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Why are you out to destroy us? Us? Oh, I have nothing against you, Dorothy. What have you got against my husband? That's private. Private? Yes. Has he asked you to uh, come to his rescue? What? what are you talking about? Let me do you a good turn. Why would you want to do me a good turn? Especially since you are resolved to destroy my husband. Save yourself. The ship is sinking. Get on the lifeboat. But so far, it's a rather roomy and comfortable lifeboat. I don't know what you're talking about. Travel in the same circle. Mingle. Try to meet a man of your own position. Marry again. I happen to love my husband. Well, that's an interesting word. Happen. You happen to love Richard. <laughs> By the same happenstance, you'll come to love someone else. I should know. It happened to me. Richard isn't worth it. Since you are a woman of no morality, love is foreign to your understanding. Of course. Well, here's the position. You can strip yourself clean in a vain attempt to salvage Richard's business. I, I have confidence in Richard. I hope so. Think it through. You won't have a penny to your name, and neither will Richard. Are you equipped for a life of poverty? Mrs. Nelson? It's a woman's duty to stand by her husband. You show promise. And even progress. First you would stand by him because you love him, now because it's your duty. Mm, yes, indeed. We are really getting somewhere. You lie, 
lied to me. Why? Why did you lie to me? How could I tell you the truth? You, you were the father of her child. Oh, good Lord, it sounds like a melodrama. I was young, stupid. Now you're older and not much wiser. Didn't you ever make a mistake? Yes, I married you. Oh, Dorothy. I guessed wrong. I never had the courage to bring it out into the open. But now I can face it. My share of our money won't save you. Dorothy, you have to help me. I have nowhere else to go. Yes, you have. What are you saying? You know what I'm saying. Are you telling me to kill Judge Morrow? I'm only saying you have an alternative. Do you think for one moment that I would? I don't know. I I, I just can't stand any more of this. It's impossible for me to stay with you any longer. Just as... Just as it was impossible for you to stay with her once. <laughs> told them they're not getting paid this Friday? No. What business is it of yours? My bank holds your note. Oh, poor Richard. Actually, there can be plenty of money here by Friday and plenty of orders. Will you get out of here before I forget I'm a gentleman? Are you going to shoot Judge Morrow for me, Richard? I won't even dignify that with an answer. It would be different if you really had scruples, but in the end, you always do what's best for Richard. You don't know me. I made an adolescent mistake. I'm different now. Actually, the trouble is the judge... He talked you out of marrying me. What business was it of his? You married Dorothy. Did she really love you? Well, yes, in her way. But where is she now, Richard? You're in a jam. The judge could help you. Has he offered to lend you even one copper penny? I'll starve if I have to. Brave words. And I mean them. I'll get a job. Doing what? Anything. Oh, those anything jobs won't support you at the country club. I don't need the club. I won't commit murder. Southworth will have to close you down on Friday. Let him close me then and be damned. Richard F. Nelson and Company, fine furniture, the end of four generations. So be it. Hello? Dick. Oh, yes, Judge. I, uh, I'm feeling kind of poorly. What's wrong? Well, it's old age, mostly, I guess. I, why don't you take a run up here tomorrow and... Keep me company a bit. Well, Judge, I... I really appreciate it. All right. Good boy, Dick. Well, that was the author of all your problems. Why don't you go up there and kill him? I don't have to kill him. And I've got the last laugh on you. It looks like he's going to die soon, and he's leaving everything to me. Oh, I'm afraid he isn't. Oh, but he promised me. Did he? Barrows and Connolly are his attorneys. They also represent a company of mine. I've been able to ascertain that most of his money is going into a foundation to help needy law students. What? But he... he, he... He's not going to leave you anything. But why should you care? After all, you still have your integrity. Why do you want me to kill him? He deserves to die. He's an evil, meddling old man. That's not for us to judge. I know. But we do it all the time. Althea, isn't there any tenderness left? Any memory at all of the sweet times we knew when we were young? The judge will die soon anyhow. He has to. He's sick. It isn't as if you were robbing a man of full, rich life. I don't want to hear any more. Who's to know? Who's to suspect? They'll think it was some prowler, a burglar. There's no one up there. I don't even have a gun. I do. I have it ready and waiting. Althea, this is monstrous. Of course. But it's not your first. After all, you abandoned me, didn't you? How do I know I can trust you? You can trust me. How do I know? I keep my promises, don't I? Years ago, I promised I'd pay both of you back. I'm keeping it. Althea, isn't there any way... We're wasting time. Tonight is when we should do it. When we get there, I'll give you the revolver and I'll tell you exactly what to say. <laughs> Who's there? It's me, Judge. Oh, Dick. I thought you weren't coming up until tomorrow. Here, uh, let me turn on the light. Who, who, who's that with you? You don't remember me, Judge. Oh, who are you? I'm the girl who gambled and lost. Stop talking in riddles. I'm Althea, Judge. The town girl who wasn't good enough to marry Richard. 
Dick, what's the meaning of... The meaning is that I promised to pay you back, and I'm giving Dick one million dollars to kill you. Well, this is crazy. Show him the revolver, Richard. This is a joke. It's Nobody a must... should joke with a loaded thirty-eight in his hand. Dick, after all I've done for you... What have you done for him lately? I swear to you, I... I'll leave you everything in my will. Here, I'll, I'll even write it out now and, and, and sign it. Can you give him a million dollars? No, you don't have that much, and that's my bid. Dick, you can't kill me. I've known you since you Shoot were... Shoot him. I can't. I can't. He looks at me like that. I can't. Southwick will foreclose in the morning. Shoot him. No. Don't. I can't kill him. I can't. I don't want your money. That's childish. You need money for so many things. Payroll, the bank loan. Shoot him. No, Richard. Shoot him. I'm sorry. Please, Richard. You're a meddling old fool. No. That's it, Richard. Get angry. You've ruined my life. That's it. On account of you, I lost the only girl I ever loved. No. Why shouldn't I kill for a million dollars? I ought to kill you for nothing. Bravo, Richard. Bravo. He doesn't die. Look at him. He doesn't die. Richard. You're wasting your time, Richard. Those are blank cartridges. Blanks? I proved my point. You are a scoundrel. And now I am over you completely. Over me? If only you had told me to take my money and go to blazes. If only you had meant it. Well, goodbye, Richard. Goodbye, Judge. I hope you will remain fast friends. No, they didn't. And Richard's wife left him, too. But you know, Alcia did pay him the million dollars. After all, he kept his part of the bargain. It was she who loaded the dice we should say, the gun. I'll be loading up with some information for you when I return shortly. I wouldn't do it for a million dollars. Have you ever said that? Be careful... Someone might just happen along and offer you the million, and then where would you be? Morality. We're still no further along, are we? Does it go deep, or is it a veneer? I suppose it all depends. We have these and similar problems that are aired here seven times each week. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Patricia Elliott, Catherine Byers, Robert Dryden, and Nat Pullen. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. To say you believe that is... is... It's the height of idiocy. <sighs> you have no fear of words written on the most sacred relic in Incan history. Give me the paper. Thank you, Carlos. I appreciate it. I'd rather not take thanks for this. If this likeness be violated by plunderers, then will the wrath of Viricocha bring to them a swift and certain doom which will pursue them to their graves and beyond. Well, really Im impressive, isn't it? Are you enough impressed so that you'll return the mask? Carlos, you know very well that's not possible. It now belongs to the government. It belongs to the people who made it. And I swear by whatever God you want to believe in that I'm going to give it back to them and save you in spite of yourself. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Listerine Lozenges. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed it.
this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you've enjoyed this and want to hear more, please.